Hey everybody, my name is Roy with Total Sale Piston Rings, and today we're here in Total Sale's very own inspection room. We're going to give you a quick behind the scenes uh, into our final inspection process, some of the equipment we use, as well as how we inspect four of the critical dimensions of a piston ring. Here at Total Sale, this is one of the tools of inspection that we use. This is a Taylor Hobson profilometer, which al allows us to take various profiles of the ring and verify that they meet customer specifications. So the first critical dimension we're gonna discuss is the OD or barrel profile. The barrel profile is extremely crucial since this is the part of the ring that contacts the cylinder wall. So now we're gonna go ahead and give you an example of how we take a profile measurement of this ring. So I bring the stylus down, touch off, you'll see the stylus drag up and over. Our profile will appear on the monitor. I'm going to save it so then I can analyze it. And as you can see here, we have a uniform barrel. So the next critical dimension we're going to discuss is the ID chamfer of the ring. Depending on the size of the chamfer, top or bottom side of the ring will determine how much twist is applied in the ring and when it's in bore. So now we'll go ahead and give you an example, just like we did with the barrel. We'll show you how we take a profile of this chamfer here. So again, placing the ring into the fixture, bringing the stylus down, take my measurement, Stylus goes up and over, and once again, here is a profile of this ID chamber. So the third critical dimension we're going to discuss now is twist. The twist coincides with the ID chamfer of the ring. Again, as I stated before, depending on if there is a chamfer on the top or bottom side of the ring, also depending on the size of the chamfer, will determine how much positive or negative twist is in the ring. So this fixture here allows me to kind of simulate uh, putting the ring into the bore size that it is and I can take an accurate reading of either positive or negative twist. So as you can see here, we've got the same ring that we've been looking at in this 4.180 bore. I'll go ahead and bring the stylus down again. And I'll go ahead and take my measurement. Measurement pops up on the monitor, and again, I can save it and then analyze it. So what you're seeing here, this is the axial face of the ring here. The stylus is dropped off onto the fixture, so I can take a horizontal reading of this angle to determine how much, again, how much positive or negative twist is in the ring. So the fourth critical dimension we're going to discuss is tangential force or ring tension. The ring tension is set by the free gap. The larger the free gap, the higher the tension of the ring is going to be. Now we're going to give you an example of how we measure that tension utilizing this device here. So the way this device here works, I place the ring into the gauge, I activate the air cylinder, the natural tension of the ring 
is going to expand here, allowing the load cell to give me an accurate reading. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this ring. I'm going to place it with the end gap roughly in the 12 o'clock position. I'm going to try to square the ring up as best I can. Now I'm going to activate my air cylinder. As you can see, it pulls the gauge closed. And the natural tension of the ring is going to try to open this up, allowing the load cell to give me a reading of 3.64 Newtons. Now that you've gotten a behind the scenes look into our inspection room, that wraps up our video on the four critical dimensions of a piston ring. Remember, for the highest quality piston rings, call us today.